Hi, it's Dan, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to juice some red currants using the Sauna EUJ808 vertical juicer. Also going to make some jam with it afterwards. Now, currants are notoriously difficult to juice. This is because of a few things. They have these hard seeds inside. They have a very high pectin content, which helps when you're making jam with them. But that also tends to clog things up. Now, it's possible to juice them using a horizontal. I just juiced some uh, recently, some red currants, no problem with my horizontal. But you've got to take it slowly, carefully. If you're wanting to juice a large quantity of red currants, uh, you'll want to use a vertical juicer like this. The reason is because the 808 has a brush system that is constantly cleaning the straining uh, filter so the seeds don't get stuck in there. It's also moving vertically. The horizontal is trying to push it through, and when you have all that pectin, it's thick and almost gelatinous. When you're going vertically like this, gravity is helping you. So that's going to make it a lot easier. Now you can also use some black currant, white currant. White currant should be fine. They're similar like red. Black currant could be a little more difficult. You'd want to go a little more slowly, kind of watch and see how it goes. But especially fresh red currants. These were just picked today, and they look real nice. So you want to look for those green stems. So I'm about ready to fire up this machine, show you how you can do a big quantity using a vertical juicer. Now in this recipe that I'm making today, I'll need about a liter of red currant juice. We found that typically a kilo of red currants will give you almost that, maybe uh, 800 milliliters. So you need a little over a kilo to get that amount, and that's what I've got here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. It's a simple process. One thing you want to be careful about in the vertical system is long fibers. Now, that may prove to be an issue with these stems. I'm going to see. If it does come to be a problem, what I would do is, as I'm feeding them, I'd have some scissors and just cut these in half so the fibers are a little shorter. But I'm just going to start feeding them. No need to use a pusher. It's all self-feeding. You notice it's building up in there. It's just because I have the valve closed. There we go. That cap there is handy if you want to make some mixed juice. You can mix currants with lots of things, apples, watermelon, uh, raspberries. There's lots of possible combinations. And in that case, I would keep it closed as it mixes. So really quickly, I've got my liter of juice here a lot faster than when I use my horizontal at home. One thing I noticed that's interesting is the consistency of this pulp. It is almost like chalk. It's so dry. There is absolutely no moisture in there at all. And a nice thing, especially for those who have made jam from red currants, you'll notice in here absolutely no seeds. It has filtered all of that stem, skin, seeds into here. So all those laborious, time-consuming steps that you'd use when you're making jam, you just jumped over that and you're ready to make the jam. So I've got, I've got my leader. Let me throw a few more in here and shut her down. Just about a liter. And this thing processes it really quickly. Look at that. Yep, that's a liter. So I'll shut her down. I'm going to go get my portable stove top and then start making some jam. So now it's time to make the jam. Now the recipe is simple. It's basically equal parts of red currants to sugar. Of course you can adjust that. Some people don't like it so sweet. You'll put a little less sugar. If you want it sweeter, you can put in more. Uh, 
I know some people will put a bit of lemon zest in it. I even saw one recipe where they like to add vanilla to it, get a red currant vanilla jam. Sounds interesting. But I'm going to do the basic one. Uh, basically one part red currants to one part sugar. In this case, I'm going to use half a liter of this red currant juice, only because I've got a small pot here. And I will use a half kilo uh, of sugar. Now the tricky thing here, this is kind of uncharted territory in all other recipes, the red currants are boiled to get them soft enough to the point that you can extract the seeds from them. And that boiling is a part of the cooking process. In this case, this is coming in raw. This is coming in fresh. So I'm probably going to have to cook it longer. Some of these other recipes, you can just bring it to a boil, mix it with sugar, it's ready. Or maybe five, seven minutes. This is going to take longer because these haven't cooked at all. So what I'm going to do is put in about a half a liter of the currants. I've got a scale inside here so I can see. I've also got a scale here. That was a little too much. I'm going to pour a bit back. That's fine. It doesn't have to be exact as long as I match the quantities. And I already have half a kilo of sugar. I'm going to put that in here. Seems like an awful lot, but that's how jam goes. I'm going to mix it around. Normally I'd have the heat going now, but this portable stove's got a fan going. It's kind of loud. I don't know how that'll sound in the video, so I'm just going to stir it up here. And what I'll do is start cooking it. I'll bring it to a boil, keep it at a medium heat, at a slow rolling boil. It might take up to 30, 35 minutes for this. I'm not sure. I'll do the chill test where I put some on a plate, a chilled plate, and check the consistency. So I'm going to start it, fire it up here, and we'll come back as this is getting closer to being ready. So it's cooked about 35 minutes and it's ready. Maybe 30 minutes it was ready, I let it go about 35. How do you know when it's ready? There's a couple of ways to check. The spoon test is kind of the most common. If you take a spoon and it's not ready, what I'll do is pour this out and the very last part, if it's not ready, will be a drop. You'll see it drip, drip, drip. If it kind of comes down as a thicker sheet, you can see already. It's kind of gelatinous. Even that last drop isn't even coming. It's a great indication that it's ready. Another test I do, I'll take a chilled plate, keep it in the fridge. I have one down here. And you'll put a spoonful of the jam on there. And I put it back in the fridge for about a minute. And then you just poke it. You do the little touch test. I have one here. I just put this spoonful just about a minute ago. And yeah, it's completely set. I can't even move this thing. So it's ready to go. I'm going to put it in the jar here. Make sure your jar is tempered like a Pyrex glass. About three weeks ago, my wife made the mistake of not using that and ended up in the hospital with second degree burns. So I'm going to be very careful myself. Or just pour it. Why not? You can see that's less than an hour from a bowl of berries that were just growing this morning to a jar of red currant jam, all ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. Looking forward to trying this once it's set. And we'll see you next time.